onboard airline tonight. Football's coming home, flying in on Britannia. We ran out of champagne, opened all the bottles, we ran out of lager. Aaron fights to keep his job. She was like having a bad day that day, and I'm just saying I caught the brunt of it because I really, honest to God, wasn't rude. I need three glasses, all with ice, please. And BJ's shaken but not stirred. Make it snappy, make it snappy, come on. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. The summer is almost over for likely lads and novice stewards Jason and Aaron, who are enjoying a stopover in the Dominican Republic. This is nice, mate. This is this is slightly nicer uh, than um, Barbados, except for in Barbados there's more single women than there are here. Yeah. Everyone here is, is getting full of married, married or couples, got married. Yeah. Or honeymoon. Think they're going for donkey's years. Would recommend it to the lads. It's not a lads' holiday, but Definitely it's certainly not. a nice holiday. Yeah. When they get back, they'll find out if Britannia plans to keep them on. So they've got one last chance to prove themselves. They've just put some those savoury snacks in like they're... Who's done it? Um, John Glasper. Put them in the same in the, like the life jackets. When they're going to open them up and put them on, all the savoury Who? things will fall out. Jason doesn't realise his seatbelt has also seat been booby-trapped. And adjust like this, and unfastened like this. Your life jacket is kept in a pocket under your seat. If it is needed, take it out of its container and put it over your head. Wrap the tape around your waist, bring them to the side, and tie them securely in a double bow. To inflate the life jacket, pull the red toggle sharply downwards. Ladies and gentlemen, your seatbelt should now be fastened securely to take off. Before we make a final check of the cabin, please fold away your table, put your seat back upright with the armrest down. Cheers, mate. Wow. Thanks for that. Wow. Thanks for what? Oh, yeah. What happened? What happened? You just seen the state of the passenger. Oh, my. Biscuits wow. everywhere. All over her hair. Yeah. All over the carpet. <laughs> all on her husband. You're a joke. What tells? Right. This is our first long haul trip. <laughs> so basically what I've done to help us along the way because otherwise, because we're new, they'll be looking for us to make mistakes and they'll be picking up on it and taking them. So I've drawn up a little uh, a guide. Tells me and Jason basically where we're working from. On our boarding zones, the meal service, the second meal service. Basically, it's got everything that we need to be doing on there. Throughout There's a the copy flight. for me and a copy for him, so as we uh, can look like we know what we're doing, rather than looking silly and like, ooh. <laughs> Halfway across the world, and the night shift at Manchester Airport has a problem. Another family is about to come a cropper over their passport. What we've had to do is speak to Special Branch right. and they're going to send somebody through to have a word with me. Um, what could happen if we send you on this, the airline could be fined and basically it could be anybody that's just written a child onto your passport. Right. So um, I'd suggest if you can get the birth certificate here, that would be a great help. We've written in James's name in the passport, the son's name in it. We did it last year. We flew with it last year, and it were all right. I've just spoken to Britannia again. She's actually going to phone the head office in Newton and see what they've got to say, but we do have to speak to Special Branch as well. Right. OK, so yeah. basically we've just got to wait for somebody to come. We were just thinking if somebody could fax one through, would that help? See, I work at Chesterfield Hospital. Right. And I so I can see. get to a fax machine there. Yeah. A uh, gentleman's just suggested if somebody could possibly fax the child's birth certificate through. I know it's not the original, but would that be acceptable? It would. All right, then. Thanks a lot. Ian Summers has just one hour to get the birth certificate. The family's £500 holiday to Spain is at stake. It's the late night flight from Ibiza, and Chief Steward BJ Aldridge has got some thirsty passengers. Uh, we've decided, as it's such a short flight time, sir, and most people want to fly. Excuse me? Uh, we want to do duty free goods instead of drinks. You know, it was just his attitude. You know, so I said, I'll serve you a drink, no big deal. 
I said, let's not make her first. Well, unfortunately, the first person that I spoke to said, um, aren't you doing drinks? I said, well, we're slightly against it, so because we want you to free, you know, we want to sell duty free goods. And he said, we don't want to buy any duty free goods. So I said, well, if, you, if you're that desperate, I'll, I'll get you a drink. So he said, well, yes, I would like a drink. So I said, well, don't make it first. You know, I'll serve you. You know, it's not a problem, no big deal. But it was just the way, you know, he got a bit funny. So I thought, best I serve him. Anyway, I've got more to do now. Suddenly, it's drinks all round. Connie and Coach and Sonic, Southern Comfort. Whiskey and joy with ice? Yeah. I'll be back in a sec. Hello, is Dad there, please? It's Ian. Can you get Dad, please? Hello. We've got a bit of a problem here at the airport. His passport isn't um, filled in properly. And what they're saying is they need a copy of James's birth certificate to prove that he's our son. Is there any way you can get to Louise's mother, to, to get the key off Louise's mother, to go into our house, into the bureau, and you know that folder that we have in the bureau? But you know where the bureau is in the front room? There's a folder in there, and under B or C for birth certificate, James's birth certificate's there. Now we need that birth certificate then, faxing, faxing, well, you'll be able to fax it from Chesterfield Royal Hospital. At last, it looks like things are falling into place for the Summers family. The special branch have just come back to me and they're quite happy. They've done, yeah, they've done all the checks and... Ah, uh, sorted. So my dad's got to get the information down to the hospital. The hospital's got to get the information down to the fax machine and then from there they're going to fax it down here, so it should be about... Half an hour, hopefully. Lemonade. And a glass of ice water. Sparkling water. Just ordinary. See, what it is, is they, they take out two drinks and two more people say, oh, look, they've got a drink, quick, let's get one ourselves. Yeah. So then they have a drink as well. But that's why it's just the rear cabin, so nobody at the front knows what we're doing exactly. <laughs> well, one person asked, and he was very rude, so I had to, I had to serve him. And then, of course, all the people around him said, oh, well, we want a drink as well. But well, they were really nice. And I didn't mind doing that. But then everybody else wanted a drink as well. So, like, we doing... there was only two of us doing tea and coffee. The rest were doing drinks. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. All right, done and cheers. Um, right, we're just doing top-ups. Although Special Branch has given the OK, Britannia are still nervous about letting the Summers family fly. What, what the problem is, you see, because that's not, it's, you know, you've written on the passport, immigration in Girona could decide to just send you back and might not let you in, and that's the problem, and then the airline would be fined. You've defaced an official document, which sounds serious, serious, <laughs> you know, but that's what they're saying. And I've spoken to an, um, what they call an ops superintendent in Luton, who I've asked, can he try and, you know, take it a little bit further still? and see if, you know, anyone will let this one go. So we're doing as much as we can. With minutes to go before the flight, Pat Baines rings HQ for a final answer. He said no. Right. So Vic said no as well. Right, OK. All right, my love, thank you. Bye. No, I'm sorry, they won't. So what does that mean then? Well, I can't let you travel this evening. No. Because they said they said you've defaced an official document, and that you know that's just not allowed, unfortunately. I can't let you travel. I suppose they've done all they can do, haven't they? But you know, at the end of the day, we're not going anywhere, are we? And just pretending it's not letting us go anywhere. But that's it, isn't it? That's that's what we're lumbered with. At Luton Airport, a reception committee is waiting for some very important passengers. The England football team has just held Italy nil-nil to qualify for the World Cup. They're coming home on Britannia. David Beckham, last time he came down here, I sang to him. I sang, I like Mama, I love you. Mama. It's just a good job I can sing. Also in attendance, 
David Beckham's number one fan. When we come through those doors, all the nation will gel as one. And we'll We're representing the entire nation. As the party atmosphere builds up in Luton, the Summers family aren't going anywhere. Despite the convoluted efforts of Britannia, Special Branch, Chesterfield Hospital, and Ian Summers' dad. He said something about having to go to the hospital to tell the person not to open the office up to send a fax. No, it's not funny. I'm not laughing. I am. Store. No, it's just to open the office to send a fax. People running all over the place to send the fax, and now that we've been I'm shocked. <laughs> the family eventually flew out two days later.